Hi, my name is Tracy Tetahama Espinosa, and it is a thrill for me to be able to come and share these new ideas coming from neuroscience that impact teaching. And I really, truly believe that there's never been a better time to be an educator. With all of the bad that's happened in the world, there are some really fantastic things coming out of neuroscience informing the ways that we can better teach online, and I can't wait to share those things with you. I teach a course at Harvard University's Extension School called the Neuroscience of Learning. It's an introduction to mind, brain, health, and education, and I'm the associate editor at Nature Partner Journal's Science of Learning, and we're starting to see a whole new series of research coming in that supports certain types of interactions during these times of being online, and I want to share some of those things with you. One of the main things that we're really coming to understand is that there's just no cognition without emotion, and that attending to social emotional needs, mental health during these times um, has been really, really important, but not just for now. It's something that will carry over into the future. So what we'll do during the session is we're going to be talking about our changing role as educators. We're going to look at that new profile within the context of a transdisciplinary lens of mind, brain, health, and education, and then we're going to talk some tech tools. Which tools save us time so that we can attend to the human aspect of learning? Let the machines do what machines do best. Let people do what people do best. And within this talk, we will also try to get rid of some of the neuromyths that sort of invade our teaching practice and uh, try to understand uh, those core principles and tenets, things that are really true about human learning and the brain and what we can leverage within our classroom context, especially taking into consideration uh, maybe cultural variations and also what this new modality of teaching online actually tells us about teaching and learning. Many of you are often faced with trying to manage large group sessions and how is it that we can benefit from actually doing these large group uh, Zoom rooms? What are the things that we can learn from as far as technology is concerned related to social contagion, the disinhibition effect? How can we leverage things like breakout rooms for small group interaction and authentic learning? How can you really use the chat to your advantage and low stakes testings uh, that would be self-corrected so that we can have more time to explain the why behind mistakes as opposed to just the mistakes themselves, the use of uh, discussion boards and reflection to enhance learning outcomes. All of these things are facilitated in online learning and online contexts, and we'll be going into each of those and how they can benefit your classrooms. So there has never been a better time to be a teacher. We are putting everything into question right now. Uh, doubting a lot of things about policies and large standardized tests and things like that. That's all up for grabs right now. So I really believe that online is a way to reach more students, to personalize our learning, to differentiate through homework, for example, and it saves us time in the long run. But it is totally new territories. And as new learners ourselves, we need to be open to these new ideas uh, and see what's going to happen in the future of education thanks to the nudge we've received from this crisis that we're now living in. So looking forward to talking to you and exchanging ideas. If you do have any questions that you would like me to address specifically, please feel free to write me before we meet and I will work your questions into the presentation. Thanks a lot.